So today, what we're going to do is the glitchy players rebuild. You probably always hear me talk about glitchy players in franchise that do really, really well. So let's see how they really do if we put them all into one team and try to win a World Series. Or are we just going to show how random franchise really is? And it, it's just like hit or miss if a player is going to be good or not. So when I say glitchy players, I'm usually talking about a player that's around 80 or below and is really easy to trade for. So a player that really is just easy to attain and put onto your team. So I'm not looking at Mike Trouts. I'm not looking at Carlos Correa's. I'm not looking at top prospects. I'm kind of looking at players that kind of sit in the middle, kind of average, but some of their stats just really do well and they just perform really well in a sim style franchise. So with that being said, that's really about it. I put them all on one team. We're gonna see how it goes. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Let's get into it. All right, we got three years just to kind of test it out, see what happens. Um, I have a list of some other players that I didn't throw on the team because I want to see how these um, these kind of glitchy players that I talk about um, do. So let me get the roster set up. I'll show you it. Alrighty. So obviously there are those really big name players. You know, the Clayton Kershaw's, Mike Trout and players that you would definitely want to get. But those guys are really tough to get. Those are really hard to trade for. Even top prospects are really hard to trade for. So before we get into it, obviously the roster is somewhere on screen at some point in the beginning of the video. So you guys always know which roster that I'm using. But let's talk about the pitchers because when you look at these guys, Mike Miner usually has a pretty easy, you know, pretty, pretty good stats. Also, the contract isn't terrible. You get him for two years and he's normally pretty, pretty glitchy. Herman Marquez is a good player for the future. He's got a really, really good contract. And he also just kind of does well for some reason. He always does well in franchise. And he's not too terribly hard to trade for. He's probably one of the harder players to trade for. But he still is a pretty good player to get. Jordan Montgomery, formerly of the Yankees. He's one of those players that, again, very low contract. Good stats. Just seems to do really well in franchise. Trevor Williams is another player that I like to get. This one from the Pirates. Um, you guys can see, again, a very friendly contract and normally sits around that low 80s mark. Ryan Barucki, for some reason, you look at his stats, you go, he's not going to be good, but he is. He is a beast in franchise. Again, a very good contract, and he sits in that high 70s mark. Most of these guys are really easy to trade for. Yes, you could go out and get Clayton Kershaw, and you could go out and get this guy and that guy who's really, really good rated, really, really highly rated, but these are the guys to look at. When you look at the bent or the bullpen, these guys are, for some reason, just really, really good. If you're looking for like a long reliever, I would go with like a Matt Strom or a Robbie Erlin. Um, someone in that kind of range, maybe even a Michael Walker. He's he's a little bit harder to get. He also always doesn't, he's kind of an iffy player to perform, but long relievers, I'd probably go with one of those three guys. But for the bullpen, Drew Steckenrider, for some reason, just performs really, really well has a very good contract. Jonathan Holder of the Yankees, again, a player that's got really good stats, really easy to trade for, and just really good. Alex Claudio, you need a lefty, he's a good guy to get. Another good guy is Tony Watson. You could also go Jake Diekman, both players that aren't too hard to trade for. And Alex Claudio is a player that gets really, really good, and he is probably one of the easiest relievers to trade for. Richard Blyer, another player, just because he's older doesn't mean he's not good. He gives you two to three really good seasons as a lefty, He's just a beast, really easy to trade for. John Brebbia, probably one of the harder relievers to trade for in this group, but still very, very good. And also a low contract, Adam Simber, same thing. Good, low contract. And then Dylan Floro, same thing, gives you about two to three good seasons, but he's just a beast. He's a, he's a player that you definitely want. So we don't have a long reliever, but I think this is still a really glitchy starting rotation and bullpen. I love it. Let's go take a look at this lineup. So when we look at these lineup, there are some other players that I would consider. Michael Franco over the Phillies. We got Paul DeYoung, Didi Gregorius, who didn't make the list, but still could maybe feature in this video at one point. Um, for the outfield or maybe even second base, Jeff McNeil is always a good player to get. Albert Almora Jr., Nicholas Castellanos is usually available in free agency. There's definitely some really good glitchy players out there that are usually at the 80 or a little bit under that mark that are really easy to trade for. But let's talk about the team we're gonna rock with today. Ender Inciarte, just because he's an aging center fielder and he may not be the most powerful hitter and it's not gonna hit you a lot of bombs, he gets you a good on base percentage and he's just a really good leadoff hitter. If you're also looking for a center fielder with a little bit more pop, you could go George Springer, who's a player that 
for some reason is really easy to trade for and puts up like MVP type numbers every single season. But Teoscar Hernandez is probably a little bit lower on your list. He's still really, really good and he's young. So he's going to develop. So center field, Inciarte, Almora, Teoscar Hernandez or George Springer. Those are your players. Shortstop, Jorge Polanco is a key guy for me at shortstop. Like I've also mentioned, Didi Gregorius, Paul DeYoung. Those are also really, really good shortstops. Um, and his contract is super friendly over the next few years. Gotta love it. Jose Martinez, really, really easy to trade for. Really, really good contract. And he's got really good batting stats. So you just know he's going to get you a good average. Sit around the 20 home run mark. Gotta love it. First base, Jesus Aguilar. Definitely got the pop along with Jed Jerko. They're just really good hitters. That's what you're looking for at first base. Third base, Michael Franco, Miguel Andujar. He's probably one of the harder ones to trade for Andujar. But you could also go Johan Camargo who develops quite well, and he actually plays a lot of positions. Love it. So, outfield. I went with Domingo Santana, a player I don't normally get in my franchise, but he always seems to hit around 30 home runs and just does really well. So I decided to give him a shot here, and his contract is pretty good with arbitration too. Aled Miss Diaz, I've been getting a lot more recently, and he's just kind of a glitch. It's that vision. It really helps him out. Second base, shortstop. He's a good key piece to get. Second base. Adam Frazier of the Pirates, really good, sits around that low 80s mark and he just develops so well. He's gonna give you three, four, five good seasons. And with that arbitration, solid contract as well. And then my favorite is this catcher. Omar Narvaez, for some reason, is a beast. Every single franchise. So we're gonna see how he does here. We also threw in Mitch Garver as a possible backup as well, especially since in real life, he's doing really good. Vision and discipline are high. Gotta love it for a catcher. So that's the glitchy franchise team let's see how it does i feel like we should do well i really do um i don't see why we wouldn't um this is a really really good team i'm actually kind of excited to see how it goes so let's get into it and uh see how season one plays out you're gonna see our record and i'm telling you these players are glitchy but our record is so good and look what happened we made the postseason as a wild card team how how but let's let's take a look let's take a look at league leaders and everything jordan montgomery had the most wins interesting i did mention anthony rendon's kind of a glitchy player as you guys can see the best at batting average and you guys can see oh jose martinez is up there as well gotta love it um any of our ender and Ciarte has some hits jose martinez has some hits um doubles anybody domingo santana all right all right so we do we do have some stats that really that really are uh that are, are up there i have a feeling we did domingo santana had some home runs so i have a feeling our, our glitchy players are definitely working in our favor so we had a gold glove bryce harper and jd martinez had the mvp and the max scherzer and severino cy young so let's take a look see how things went mike minor 3.5 era 1.2 whip solid Herman marquez low era low whip gotta love it Jordan Montgomery was the most wins in the MLB, but he had a great year as well. The whip's a little high, but still very good. Trevor Williams, solid. And then Ryan Barucki, I saw he was struggling a little bit, but um, give him a couple seasons. I have a feeling he's going to be really solid. So when we take a look at our bullpen, Stecken Ryder did struggle. Holder, Holder did not. Holder did not at all. Claudio did. Blyer did not. Brebia, Simber, and then Floro. So it looks like we had two bullpen arms struggle, but I feel like that's just something that happens. I feel like no matter what, you always have some struggling arms. But for the most part, our ERA for our bullpen was what? Like two, pff, the highest one was two eight. If you take out these two five ERA guys, that's, whew, that's some gross numbers right there. Pitching looks solid. Let's take a look at our bench. Um, this is not good. This is not good. Uh, that's pretty solid. And Johan Camargo did it pretty well. Ender and Ciarte, I mentioned. Good average. Going to get on base. Going to provide you with a good leadoff hitter. 27 stolen bases. High average. 36 doubles. Even 80 RBIs as the leadoff hitter. Gotta love it. Jorge Polanco. Solid year. The home runs may not be there, but 38 doubles and almost a 300 average. I'll take that for sure. Right field. Jose Martinez had one of the highest averages in the league. Good amount of home runs around 20 like i mentioned that's just what he does uh first base jesus aguilar 22 home runs 82 or 82 rbis and 300 average 
Uh, 82 doubles would be a little insane. Miguel Andujar, 246 is a little low, but he's going to develop. He's got 30 doubles, 80 home run, or geez, 80 RBIs. Um, I still think we got we got a good squad here. Domingo Santana had a good year, very good year. 40 doubles, 31 RBIs. I'm all over the place. 31 home runs, 95 RBIs, and a 300 average. I mean, crazy. Jed Jerko, 320 average in his plate appearances, 14 home runs. Okay, okay, Adam Frazier, 269. I definitely want to get him a little bit higher in the lineup. Just don't know how. And then Narvaez, this is the guy I mentioned, sitting around 15, 16 home runs, 14 doubles, 300 average. I love that as a catcher. Love to see that. So we made it as a post of the postseason as a wild card team. 103 wins for the Braves. They are ranked fourth. We are ranked 13th. So we're not even, we're just barely in the top half of the teams in terms of ranking. And we had probably the, what, third best record, fourth best record in baseball. We have a glitchy, glitchy team. Let's hop into this game against the Nationals. And let's see what happens. I have a feeling we should win, right? We should definitely win. We're the home team as well. We're going to have Marquez take the mound. He had a phenomenal season. And uh, let's move myself, and then we'll hop into this game. All right, all right, let's do this. So I have a feeling this just, uh, should go well, but they got Malik Smith. I didn't see that. Glaber Torres is on their team as well. He is a must get. If you want to trade away a lot, he's a good player to get. Sack fly gets one in. So one run, not terrible, but going against Max Scherzer, we are going to have to score. There we go. Miguel Andujar does it. And we're back into it. Double play gets us out of it. So 1-1 one, one game. Marquez is allowing a lot of hits. We're going to have to watch this stamina for him. He's already halfway through through it so far. So let's see. Come on. Triple to start it off. Sack fly makes it a two-run game. Um, you know what? We're going to take him out. We're going to go to... Uh, let's, let's go. Let's go Diaz. Strikes out. Unfortunate. And then a single, okay, okay, okay. Um, another player to get if you're looking for a tough, it's, he's gonna be very difficult to get, but I definitely think he's a really good arm to have, or not an arm, but a good player to have. Juan Soto, very, very good um, outfielder to get for the future. And I went to the lefty lefty matchup and you let me down. What are the odds there? Double play, that was huge with the bases loaded, one out, whoo. All right, so we're down two still. It's bottom seven. We got to get something going here, guys. Come on. Really? So we're down four now. We're down four. Heading into the ninth. Brebbia is struggling. We'll just go to Floro. Gets us out of the inning. So down four, ninth inning. That's the game. Scherzer just... Scherzer's lights out, man. He's, he's tough to hit. He really is. Let's head into the offseason. All right, so unfortunate end to the season, but um, let's the Astros defeat the Cubs, okay? But let's see, let's see. Uh, it's a little sad to see that because the Cubs aren't making the postseason this year. No, nobody retired for us, but um, we got Jed Jerko, and I'm looking at my list of other players we could pick up, and Jed Jerko is still having a good season. So you know what? Let's just offer him. Let's give him one more year, see how he does, and let's move forward. Um. And let's let's see let's see um arbitration i feel like everybody here had a really good year might as well bring them back there's no real point in not bringing them back and then contracts we're gonna do the same we're gonna bring everybody back Alrighty, guys so before season two starts i want you guys to get in the comment section and let me know some of your favorite glitchy players who do you guys always trade for who is someone that just does so well for you no matter what in franchise i want you guys to put it down in the comment section down below because i was just simming and i was kind of looking because we need a long reliever and i just thought of a new glitchy player that i didn't even mention yet so let's go trade for him all right so like i said we need a we need a, a long reliever and stecken rider struggled a little bit last year so let's go get that long reliever that i thought about i mentioned strom i mentioned erlin both lefties which would be really good in the pen but this guy i always forget him he plays for the astros colin McHugh. he's a righty got a pretty good contract as well three million for the next two years really balanced stats 
and he just always sits around a low three mid three era and he's just a good player he's not difficult to trade for at all we're gonna trade stecker rider for McHugh, and i like this move i think this is gonna be the one move that we do um i want to see how this lineup does because most of these guys are still pretty young they're gonna develop they're gonna get much better and i have a feeling we have a really solid team going forward for the rest of the season so let's see how this goes um, I have a couple players in mind of who I want to trade for next year if some of these players don't do well in the lineup and then with these moves This is how we're kind of looking for the bullpen and for the starting rotation Herman Marquez up to an 89 Trevor Williams 89 Mike Miner still sitting around the mid 80s Montgomery's going up Baraki's going up. I love it. This team's getting really nice I think it's gonna become really glitchy really soon. Let's see how season two plays out. All right, we actually won the division this time, which is awesome. So let's see how it played out. You guys can see 97 and 65 won the division taken on the Dodgers, which is going to be a, a bit of an issue. But let's take a look. We got some league leading stats. Mike Miner had the best winning percentage and Dylan Floro had the be uh, most saves. I'm looking to see Jorge Polanco had some high batting average. Uh, we had some of the highest hits for Jorge Polanco and Ender Inciarte. Uh, doubles. Ender and Ciarte is up there. Frazier's up there. We got triples with Polanco. Home runs for Jose Martinez. Okay. All right. Um, RBIs, Andujar and Martinez in Ciarte, Polanco. So offensively, it looked like things kind of clicked this year. We have a gold glove once again. MVP, Michael Conforto. He is another glitchy player. And sometimes, sometimes he's difficult to trade for. But if you can get him, he does turn into a beast. He definitely does. JD Martinez. Cy Young for Kluber and you Darvish. Okay. Um, rookie of the year, Dustin May, Jesus Lizardo. So yeah, Michael Conforto is another one of those players that's kind of glitchy. So you guys can see we're 14th. So again, we've actually dropped, but we're sitting around that middle of the rankings for MLB teams, but we're putting up really good years. This year, we're actually the second best record in all of baseball. So just just happened to put together a good team offensively you guys can see jed jerko again around 200 at bats putting up pretty good numbers um Aled miss diaz had a lot better year love it love it it's, it's more at bats but better numbers very good uh tasker hernandez still sitting around 200 but he's obviously not a starter so he's not really getting that chance to really develop and then mitch garver's gone up a little bit and you can see in his limited appearances you know pretty similar numbers to what he did last year ender and Ciarte, again high average doubled oh actually went up with home runs rbi stayed about the same high amount of doubles really good stats jorge polanco's getting better as well home run numbers doubled rbis went up a bit average went up everything went up gotta love it jose martinez i don't get it man he's just so glitch he's literally a glitch average went down but it doesn't matter when you're putting up those runs and home runs domingo santana again pretty solid year not gonna complain about that miguel andujar putting up Good numbers, 30 home runs, 28 doubles, almost 100 RBIs, and a better average. Gotta love it. Johan Camargo, he's starting to prove he could be a potential, like maybe second baseman, first baseman, shortstop. Doesn't matter. He's starting to prove he's got some got some worth in the team. Adam Frazier, look at these numbers. 20 home runs, almost 40 doubles, two, 277 average, 28 years old, 88 overall. He, he might be our leadoff hitter going forward. He's just really good. Narvaez, almost 300 average again. He's a beast. He's just a glitch at catcher. And then Jesus Aguilar, a little bit of pop of the, off the bat at the end of the lineup. And he's putting up good numbers too. I love this team. This team offensively is just really, really good. Pitching wise, Herman Marquez, how are you not? Your strikeout numbers are low. I get that. But how are you not winning Cy Young with stats like that? Trevor Williams, good stats. Mike Miner, good stats. Jordan Montgomery, good stats. Barucky, there we go. As a five starter, you got a guy under four for your ERA. You're set. You got a stacked lineup right here. When we look at the bullpen, McHugh, like I said, sits around that three, three and a half ERA. Solid. Holder, good. Brebbia struggled a bit. Okay. A little worrying. Claudio struggled a little bit. A little worrying. But Simber, uh oh. We're going to swap those two. Blyer was good and Floro struggled a bit, even though he had the most saves. Hmm, maybe he's not a closer. So who are we gonna go to to close games? We'll give Simber a shot. So bullpen's looking a little shaky. We're gonna have to find some new glitch players, possibly. But let's see how this postseason plays out. Elimination game. Here we go. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I feel like we should have we should have a good matchup here. Julio Urias. 
we're gonna go Jordan Montgomery. They have a lot of lefties in their lineup. That was my that was my thinking. And we're gonna move myself to the wonderful corner. And we're gonna hop into this. We're gonna hop into this. So we gotta get on the board early. That's the big thing. We gotta score early and often. So can we do it? So looking at their lineup, Jose Abreu's new, but for the most part, it looks like a standard Dodgers lineup. First and second, one out, bases loaded. Jose Martinez, come on. We got a score there. We really do. So, so far, you know, it's pretty quiet. One run scores, Ender and Ciarte. There we go. All right, we got that lead. That's all we need. So new pitcher, Pedro Baez. Um, Camargo lines out. Garver out. Um... I'm gonna take him out now. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to Floro. And he gets us out of the inning. Perfect. So going into the seventh, let's go to Diaz. Grounds out, grounds out, singles. Okay. Not the best. Um lefty, righty, lefty, lefty. Hmm. Let's go to Claudio. Lefty lefty matchup. And Claudio lets us down there. Tie ball game. What? How come every time we go to the, the matchups, it's, it lets us down? We're going to go to Simbers or Closer. So we're going to go Brebia here. All right. It comes down to this. Can we do it? Garver walks. We're going to pinch hit. We're going to go to... I think we got it. Teoscar Hernandez. Really? Really? Come on. First and second one out. Jose Martinez. That's what I'm talking about. And then Jed Jerko. Two of our older players in the lineup coming in clutch. Coming in clutch. Solid five run inning. Simber shut the door. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And then we're going to go into this final game here. We're going to quick manage it, obviously. That's what I'm talking about. That's all we needed. We're going to let Herman Marquez take the mound. And um, we're going against Kershaw. So you know what? Let's... Uh, let's keep the lineup. Let's keep the lineup. It worked well for us last time. Not a good start. Not a good start at all. Oh boy. Um. Oh, really? Okay. That's uh. Not a good start. Seven nothing. Seven nothing. Hmm. This is uh looking a little, looking a little grim. Eight nothing now. And uh, unfortunately, the glitchiness of our players seems to have uh, uh, run off. Maybe I was gonna say run off, you know, gone away. But we we might have a game here. We might have a game here. Um, Jed Jerko, no. Frazier gets on. Okay, a fly out and a strikeout. We're gonna take McHugh out. We're gonna go to Claudio, and then we're gonna go to Brebia. I got I gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop playing the matchups, man. Gotta stop playing the matchups. We're gonna go Norvaez. He walks. Out, 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 of course. Why Why would it be any other way? We're gonna go Simber. All right, it comes down to this. Can we do it down four? No, we can't. That's, that is an unfortunate loss for us. We'll see who wins the World Series, but we, we had a little bit of a comeback coming. Um, Nationals defeat the Yankees, okay. And we're heading into the final year. We're gonna make some trades because I have some glitchy players in mind that I wanna try out that we haven't yet. So Mike Miner, been really good, but I feel like we can get a really good younger pitcher that I have in mind that we can trade for. And then Jed Jer Jerko hit a grand slam, got us back into that game, or actually kind of won us that game, the game four. But you know what? He's been a bench bat. I have another little glitchy bench bat in mind. So we're gonna let these two guys go and we're gonna head into the off season. So with that being said, let's see here. Arbitration, everybody's getting it because we've already lost two players and I'm like, mm, you know, we, we, gotta, we gotta find those replacements. Everyone's getting a contract. I'll see you guys at the start of season three. All right, so one of those glitchy players I was talking about is Michael Franco. I had mentioned him before. You guys can see his stats are really, really good. And it, you know, his home runs and stuff aren't too amazing, but he's really consistent. And I'm thinking about moving him over to first for this third season. All right, I know we're trading away Sixto Sanchez, but if you get him at the very first season, Thomas Pannone is usually a really good pickup as well for a starting pitcher. So we're gonna go with him as our new starting pitcher that's a little bit of a glitch so 
I think that's going to be our moves before season three starts. Alrighty, so I lied. We're going to make one more transaction, and that's for Alex Colome, who, again, is another player. If you trade for him, season one is not very difficult to get, and he's a closer that is just so reliable. You guys can see his stats here. Um, just one of those players that's just... If you need a closer that's not difficult to get his contract normally isn't terrible either usually around four or five million i think this is a guy to go for season three it's the last one can these glitchy players finally get us past that first round of the playoffs at least winning world series would be nice but you know one can hope so let's take a look obviously with the new additions you guys can see armand marquez is a 90 we got williams at 88 montgomery 84 83 and 83 um, I like that. It looks really strong. Our bullpen, it may not look the strongest, but they're just players that do really well. Alex Claudio, I'm hoping this is the year where he's like, I'm going to pitch really, really well. We'll have to wait and see how things go. We have Blyer, Simber, Colome. Um, I, I have a feeling it's going to go well. Looking at our lineup, not much has changed except for Michael Franco is going to be playing first base. Um, everything else, though, I mean, it's just really really strong everyone's been performing a lot better than what they're showing it's just looking good even our bench is starting to develop besides jesus aguilar you gotta love to see it and to think that our budget this entire time has been really really good because everyone's on a low contract all right guys so you know how i assemble super teams every single rebuild that we do i'm talking like 90s in almost every single position or at least high 80s well I don't ever do that well. And look what happens with this team that's just full of glitchy players. We won 103 games. We won 100 games in two of the three seasons. And the, th the one season that we didn't win 100 games, we missed out by three. So, I mean, glitchy players, that's all you need in franchise to win games. So we're taking on the winner of the wild card, which means we had the best record in baseball. League leaders, Montgomery had the best winning percentage and Colome had the most saves. Um, no batting average this time, which is interesting. Hits is up there for Martinez once again and Inciarte. Um, doubles Inciarte and Jose Martinez. He is a beast. And then when you look at the rest of it, you guys can kind of see Domingo Santana was up there with home runs. But um, it's just crazy. Awards, we had a gold glove once again. No MVPs. <laughs> Robbie Ray, MVP. Are you kidding me? Not a chance that is ever going to happen. So let's take a look at our standings. We are 16th in baseball. 16th. But yet, we've actually gone down one every season, right? I think so. Maybe this from two to three, we dropped down two spots. But we are sitting dead center in baseball in terms of ranking. And yet, we are putting up this type of of year so actually it looks like a lot of players developed this year based on the performances because Herman Marquez is almost a 90 Trevor Williams is a 90 Jordan Montgomery 88 Panone 86 Barucki 82 look at these performances by these pitchers two pitchers with a sub three ERA we have a three two seven so a lot of these players were low 80s when we started and they're pushing that 90 mark so two to three seasons is all you need for 90 players like that for 90 rated players colin McHugh, very solid holder pretty good dylan floro unreal claudio there we go that's what i'm looking for from the lefty richard blyer did well simber struggled a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put floro in that setup role and alex colome was that closer we needed look at that crazy glitchy players and as they do well they're gonna increase very very quickly which is just how it should be looking at our bench you guys can see where everyone's an 80 um isan diaz is up he is not our glitchy player jesus aguilar needs to come up i hope they didn't send him down from the get-go they didn't so we're gonna add him to the playoff roster and we're gonna send isan diaz down because he's not part of the glitchy squad but Let's take a look, see how things went. 258, 180, probably why they sent him down. Teoscar Hernandez had a good year, and Mitch Garver had a good year as well. So everybody is a beast. Makes sense, right? We got Inciarte, still putting up good numbers. Polanco, little quiet, little quiet. Um, Ho Jose Martinez, just just get him. He's not the best defender. Put him at first base. You got you to gotta glitch. Miguel Andujar, turning into a beast, only 26. We got Alenmas Diaz. Probably could take him out, probably put Camargo there um, or anybody else, really. And then we got Frazier hitting close to 300. 
he is unreal um domingo santana putting up really good numbers as well probably even move him up a little bit in the lineup narvaez close to 300 again and michael franco i told you you give him good time he's gonna develop he's gonna turn into a really good player he's a little bit of a glitch average isn't there but power numbers are you gotta love it so we started with a team that were high 70s low 80s some were sitting in even in the mid 70s even some in the low 70s but we're looking at a really good team here would i say this is a super team no there's not a lot of good power vision is high for some players not really but there's no mike trouts there's no like carlos correa's or clayton kershaw's or any very good player there's like no one that's a standout player they're just very well rounded and they're glitchy that's why it's the glitchy squad and it works out so playoff time we're taking on the nationals auto fix lineup we lost how did we lose we lost okay okay game two we lose what time to play a game time to play a game let's see how this goes Alrighty, montgomery i need you here let's do it taking on the nationals all right that's not a good start malik smith is still there glaber torres um tyler austin aramis garcia okay so some new names um i'm not too sure how we're getting smacked by this team every single game so far all right that's a good that's a good couple inning or at least one inning right there but that that's a good start we're up for nothing okay now we're oh no it's avasail garcia not aramis garcia aramis garcia is a catcher right so we're only up one now which is not good all right he's done five innings that's it that's all that's all we're getting out of him today jose martinez you are so good i don't care what anybody says he's a beast he's a beast like it doesn't matter you can say whatever you want he's a monster all right we're uh we're up 10 to 3 and i have a feeling simber can just shut the door here maybe not maybe not maybe not McHugh, come in shut the door boom that's all we needed let's keep going Let's keep moving forward. Let's keep winning games. Let's see how this finishes out. So here we go. Thomas Pannone, Pannoni, whatever his name is against Steven Strasburg. This is going to be a tough one. This really is. So we have the only hit of the game so far. As I say that, we're in a tough spot. Oh, man, we got out of it. There we go. And then Andujar goes deep. Then they go deep. So it's a tie ball game once again. Michael Franco, there we go. Four to one game. Um, we're gonna take Panon out and we're gonna go to McHugh. He's got that 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 stamina where he can go a few innings. So Narvaez, there we go. 6-2 game. Can we add on a couple more? We can't, but McHugh's McHugh's looking good. I'm gonna even Adam Frazier's getting in on the action. So 8-2 ball game. We might have a little reverse sweep coming in here. Um we'll just let McHugh do his thing. There we go. That's all we needed. And we're heading to game five against the Nationals. We're going to have Marquez on the mound. No, Barucki. I have a feeling we need to go Marquez. Maybe not. He struggled. Um, We're going to go Trevor Williams. I don't think we've used Trevor Williams yet. So let's see how this goes. Not a good start. Every time I skip a pitcher, we always get destroyed. It's 3-0. Please stop the madness. Let's get more than one hit. Our pitcher has one of our two hits. That's not good. That's not good at all. Man, Eric Fetty is tearing us apart. Anthony Rendon, tearing us apart. Take him out. All right, we're back on the board. Seven to one. Here we go. I mean, seven to three. We're back in it. Um, Colin McHugh, give me like one or two innings. That's all I need. And we're back. We're going to be doing fine. All right. Um... Base is loaded. We got to take advantage of this. Um, we're going to go versus a lefty. Uh, do I want to go Jesus Aguilar there? No, I think we got to go Hernandez here. Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice. Really? Um, Let's go Holder. Hopefully he can hold it. You know what I mean? Uh, and then that's not looking good. Can we score five runs the good start a double play was not what we needed um probably should have taken holder out there but when you you know you're down just things aren't looking good two run score please domingo santana 
and that's 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 the ball game that's the season that's the rebuild so i hope you guys enjoyed the glitchy player rebuild we put together a scary good squad like crazy good who would have thought that these glitchy players who are really easy to trade for are like superstars within three seasons when i really wouldn't have thought of it that way so i hope you guys enjoyed the rebuild hit the thumbs up button down below leave a comment of what future videos you would like to see subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you guys are notified whenever a video does go live other than that guys i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll catch you all in the next video peace